Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center in London. So today I'm reviewing a paper which has been very challenging and it's quite a novel paper. It has been used before and I don't know how it really, this combination works. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about combining clomiphene and letrozole. And so this is a paper which looked at if what happened if we combine these two drugs. So let's look at clomiphene. And clomiphene is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. It works by com competitively attaching to estrogen receptors and there's a negative feedback of estrogen is reduced and the secretion of gonadotrophins is increased. And that's how it will work. Letrozole works very differently. And letrozole is a selective aromatase inhibitor. It prevents the conversion of androgens to estrogen and that suppressed estrogen act production results in a decreased negative feedback to the hypothalamus and increased FSH. The second way letrozole may work is it seems to increase the intraovarian androgens and probably makes the ovary more sensitive to FSH. So what is the hypothesis of this study? The hypothesis of the study was that if you combined clomiphene and letrozole and that would be more effective and superior to letrozole alone. So let's look at, at the methods. From September 2016 to March 2018, randomization was done three days prior to the period or during the withdrawal bleed. Group 1 was letrozole 2.5 mg daily from day 3 to day 7 and group 2 was 50 mg clomiphene and 2.5 mg letrozole from day 3 to day 7. The patients would log this in the calendar, the bleeding, the ovulation date, mid cycle ultrasound, then at 12 to 14 weeks, serum progesterone levels on 21 or 22 days of ovulation predictor if the ovulation predictor was not posit positive. So let's look at the results. Very interesting. Because the results showed that if you use letrozole and you combined, ovulation rates were significantly better, clinical pregnancy rates were slightly better. Per cycle, uh, fecundity per cycle ovulated was slightly better. A number of women with follicles more than 15 millimeter were significantly more. The endometrial thickness again was slightly better when you combine letrozole and clomiphene. The question is, why does this work? And in fact, I've never used it in my entire career. And I have heard of it. I've, I've certainly heard of people coming up to me and saying that when you combine these two work and both work very much in different ways. And probably we think that there is an addictive effect when you combine both of these. Letrozole seems to work better at the local level. Clomiphene works at the central level. There's also been another study which looked at six cycles of clomiphene and four cycles of letrozole and these patients were resistant to both these drugs and those cases when you combine clomiphene and letrozole in ovulation rates were sick but uh, in a range of almost 82 percent and what they did in this study is they combined clomiphene 100 milligram and letrozole 5 milligram for five days Now, the question comes here is then why were 2.5 milligram used? Now, we're getting more and more evidence that 5 milligram may be the right dose to use in letrozole. And I think here the logic was that they wanted to use the minimal effective dose, which is rightly 2.5 milligram and 50 milligram of clomid. And their rates are very much comparable to what was done in the PCOS2 trial, where ovulation rate was 61% in that trial and the ovulation rate was 43%. And it's a novel method. It's a very novel method of uh, combining these two drugs. 
What I do it, I don't know. I, I have it certain different protocols of clomiphene and letrozole. Certain, sometimes I do straight strep protocols and sometimes I, I will give you an increased dose of clomiphene over a prolonged period. But that's taking into consideration. I've got a chart which says which ovaries will not stimulate and which ovaries may need to be given an additional dose of FSH. And in fact, what do these two drugs do? They break, break the FSH threshold. That's exactly what you want. You want follicles to break the FSS threshold and, and start recruiting follicles. And I think by combining these two, uh, what you're trying to tell us is that probably these two drugs work and they work in different ways, but they have an additive effect. And it's something worth looking at in, in larger studies and in, in clinical practice to see whether we'll be able to use these drugs. And at the end, do, can we reduce cost for our patients and also improve success. Coronarotrophins cost a lot of money and I think these will give us a much better idea. Thank you very much.